Hey guys and welcome back to another video and as you can see I've got the Xiaomi Notebook Pro right over here running in this particular case macOS i Sierra. Now spoiler alert doing a great job and for those of you that wonder how easy it is to install macOS i Sierra, which is really easy and then dual boot between Windows 10 and macOS Stay tuned and let's go straight for it. And this video is sponsored by NordVPN, a VPN service available for almost any platform with servers in 56 countries at an affordable price. Check out the link below for more details. And we are back. So the first thing that we will need to do is basically open up the Xiaomi Notebook Pro. As you guys can see, just remove a few screws and then we can install a M.2 SSD. In this particular case, I'm using a WD Black PCI NVMe SSD. I will share in a few days uh, some speed tests comparing the WD green, blue and black. In this particular case, I'm using the black. Now, after that, we will need to press F2 while we are booting the computer so that we can go to the BIOS or BIOS settings and then we can disable the option of secure boot. Then after that, we will need to create a bootable macOS installation USB drive and here guys I already explained how to do that on the last Akintosh video I will leave a link down below for those of you that don't know but basically once we have that USB bootable drive all we need to do is to download the files on Dalianski's guides on GitHub and of course as always all credits to down below in the video description so that you guys can check it out and including this particular video which will this particular link that we will need to download so that we can do the next step now once we have it on our computer I did drag it to my desktop so that it was easier to explain on this video after that we will need to use the EFI folder to do so as we have seen on the last video we will need to open Clover Configurator link down below as well so that we can mount the USB drive EFI partition and then open it now I will need to copy the EFI folder to that particular partition then after that I can remove the USB drive from my previous Mac and then put it on the notebook pro now, as soon as I turn on the uh, Notebook Pro, I will need to press the F12 button so that I can choose the USB as a boot drive and then I can start with the installation. And as you can see, we will go through the usual process of installing macOS. I'm sure you guys are watching some images on screen. Now, the process is basically selecting the language. Then we will need to go to the disk utility so that we can format, in this particular case, the WD Black SSD. Then I will need to select install macOS select the drive for the installation and the process will start as usual. Now at this moment, every time that the computer reboots, we will need to select the USB drive and then after that the SSD on the second step so that we can uh, go and move to the installation itself. Then just follow the installation wizard as usual on any Mac and in a few minutes we will be on the Macintosh desktop which is a great sensation on every scenario or on any uh, hardware that we are using to work as a Macintosh. Now in this particular case we will not have Wi-Fi so the first thing that we need to do is to use a USB dongle for Wi-Fi. I will leave a link down below for the one that I'm using which works great and then as soon as we have Wi-Fi we will be able to download Clover Configurator from the web and do uh, the same step in terms of the EFI. Now in this particular case, the reverse. So we will open Clover Configurator, we will mount the USB drive EFI partition, then we will copy that uh, folder named EFI to the same EFI partition on our SSD. This is not difficult, just a little bit confusing for those of you that are doing this for the first time, but basically we will need to have the same files that we have on USB on the internal SSD so that we can boot the computer. Basically, that is it. I'm sure that you guys had the chance to see that on screen, but any disk will have an EFI partition. In this particular case, the USB drive will leave us or let us boot the machine until a certain point. After that, I want to get rid of that USB drive. And the only way to do so 
is to copy that EF5 folder into the EF5 partition on my SSD. And hopefully this was understandable. At least it was the easiest way that I could explain. Nonetheless, any questions regarding this part or any other part on the installation, just leave them down below as usual. I will answer as fast and as best as I can. Now, once we have copied the EF5 folder from the USB drive to the EFI partition on the SSD. All we need to do is to eject the USB drive and then we can reboot the computer because at this moment this computer is ready to be bootable uh, with the internal SSD. Now we will need to change a few more things really simple here on the BIOS. So the next step that we uh, or the next time that we reboot we can press F2 to go to the BIOS settings and then select the Mac OS SSD as our main boot drive so that it can go directly to OS 10 or if we want during boot we can select Windows if we want. To. Now at this moment what we have is a working Akintosh and basically uh, the way that is configured right over here and if you do the same what will happen is basically this. When we restart the computer from Windows, it will detect the latest operating system that we had and it will restart on Windows, unless we press the button during boot to select OS X. If we restart from OS X or Mac OS as you prefer, it will do the same and it will see the latest operating system that we used and it will restart to OS X unless, or macOS, unless we press the arrow buttons to select a different operating system. And that is it. Regarding the installation, guys, this is it. Now, if you ask me, is it perfect? It's not. But if we compare this machine, which has a great performance, and by the way, I will be sharing really soon a video comparing with another, with a few machines, uh, especially on OS X or macOS, so that you guys can have an idea. My uh, opinion right over here is that at the price point that this machine costs, the way that it's running macOS and Windows at the same time, it's a good deal for someone that doesn't matter, of course, or don't bother or enjoys to do this Hackintosh kind of thing. Now, I was saying that it's not perfect and it's not. You can count that Wi-Fi will not work, Bluetooth will not work, and the NVIDIA GPU will not work. Everything else is working and I will uh, share with you just a few more tips, but these three are not working. Now, two of these we can solve, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, there are dongles for that. I'm using only a Wi-Fi uh, dongle and there are also Bluetooth dongles, but that will uh, take away two USB ports. The best option if we need to use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is to get a two-in-one uh, dongle, which they are available on Amazon. You can search for them and that is a good option. Regarding the GPU, it's to forget because it will never work. One more thing that I was forgetting, the fingerprint, it's not working under macOS, only on Windows, so that's another thing. Now, everything else that I've tested so far, audio works great. So what I'm going to do is to share with you guys three tests, one with no quick sync on this particular Akintosh, one with quick sync, and then one on my Mac Mini late 2012 i7 quad core, so that we can make a comparison. The trackpad, it's not the same as a MacBook, but much above the acceptable experience. We can use multiple gestures, etc. My feedback here is just that it doesn't feel the same as a Mac, but it's pleasant to use and it's good to use. It's a good quality trackpad, not so uh, well under Mac OS. There are a few gestures that sometimes I miss, but uh, if we do once and over and over, because the sensitive is just different. That's my feedback. It's not perfect, but above acceptable under Mac OS and great under Windows 10. So this is the feedback that I can give to the trackpad, which is one of the most uh, common things to use on any laptop. Regarding the keyboard, everything works in terms of keys. The exception goes to the function keys that if we look at the volume up and down uh, work great. Also the volume cancellation works great. The screen brightness uh, key doesn't work. We will need to go to the uh, display settings and then everything works just fine right over there. The brightness levels and also night shift and so on and so forth. F8 works as a app changer. F9 blocks the trackpad, uh, both on Windows and also on Mac OS. F10 will turn the keyboard backlit on or off and 
basically that's about it one more thing that it's really important on these uh, machines is the sleep function and i did test it on any scenario that i could uh, find and works great right over here as you guys can see some images on screen so i haven't had any issue at all it works like almost a macbook pro 15 inch of course it doesn't have the dedicated gpu working which would be cool the mx 150. now lastly i also tested out using my 4k display i will leave a link down below for the display that i use but it's an lg 4k display and the resolution that i got over usb type c was quad hd resolution or 2560 by 1440 at 60 hertz and then i also tested out using hdmi and the result was exactly the same. So 2560 by 1440 at 60 Hertz. So this means that at this moment, in terms of external displays that we can use with this particular computer under Mac OS, it will not go above this resolution, the Quad HD. So it's not a 4K resolution supported yet. I don't know in the future if there will be a fix for this or not. But guys, this is a feedback that I can give you if you want a machine to use Windows and Mac OS at the same time with an external display under Mac OS we can only go to half resolution and I'm going to shut up guys hopefully this video will help you to decide if this is a machine for you or not if you already have this machine and if you want to try Mac OS on it go for it don't forget to leave any comment down below with questions suggestions or even your experiences with this machine or any other and that is it my name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one